This year's been a massive year for the PHN. We've absolutely, as a team, tried to do everything we can to support clinicians across the region respond to COVID, as well as increase a range of services that we contract and support those services across the region. That's had a massive impact on the organisation, but we feel as though we've done everything we can uh, to support that work. Over the past two months, our COVID cases have been really settled, which is great news for our region and our communities. For, for the PHN, we've kept working on some key areas, being PPE distribution, particularly masks, health pathways development, a lot of educational uh, delivery still, uh, which has been really well received. So that's been terrific. The other components for us are making sure that we're ready to respond to clusters and outbreaks. So we've had our uh, work with the capacity tracker, work with practices, aged care facilities, uh, as well as commission services and allied health to make sure that we're providing as much support as we can for any uh, preparation towards clusters and outbreaks. In aged care for COVID, we've had a very joined up process with the local health districts, as well as aged care facilities and GPs. And that's where our role has been to help facilitate and coordinate response as we can, noting that the PHN doesn't have direct responsibility for that response. So our response has been all about supporting uh, and that's been part of the role with the capacity tracker as well. We're seeing that facilities are connecting with GPs in that preparation on the whole, which has been terrific. We want to continue to encourage that. And we're seeing that the work of the local health districts is really providing a lot more uh, support and information around, okay, what's the first response going to be? And that's very important. We set the emergency operations centre up within the PHNs with the view to really being able to rapidly respond in a connected way with the local health districts during COVID. We've seen that that's been very important at times, particularly around clusters and outbreaks. We've been able to stand it up, stand it back down again. And we see that going forward into the future, uh, both for natural disasters, we've seen it in bushfires that we think we'll need to stand the emergency operations centre again for other different scenarios and so we see it as a platform for us going forward where we're really able to in a better and more agile way provide a response that's joined with GPs and the local health districts. The COVID impact survey that we ran during the height of the first wave was really important for us because we were hearing anecdotal stories from practices and GPs and allied health around the impact of COVID both on their businesses and practices, but also on patients and on the well-being of their staff. So it was really important for us to get a good handle on that at the time. We want to run that again six months later to see, okay, how much is ongoing from those things. We put a lot of things in place after that first survey around further education, well-being support, resources, further health pathways, as well as other scenario planning. Alongside that, we also developed a range of telehealth supports as well, based on the feedback we had received. And we want to continue to do that. But we want to do that in a way that is responsive. So that's where the uh, COVID impact survey will be important for us. A lot of uh, GPs, allied health practitioners as well, have found this year really testing. It's been a long year. A lot of practitioners, clinicians are tired and are finding it difficult to keep going. We're hearing that. We're wanting to make sure that we're continuing to provide wellbeing, support, uh, education, information, do everything we can uh, to support them through that. Clinicians and practices want to hear about what's worked for each other and, and also what hasn't worked. So we want to continue to support that as well. We're heading towards the end of the year now. Uh, we want to make sure that we're continuing to support the wellbeing of, of clinicians across the region. The bushfire impact across key parts of the region has continued in a very significant way uh, for a range of towns and areas. And even 12 months on, it's continuing. Uh, for us, we haven't wanted to let that be forgotten. We've made sure that we've continued uh, the work of bushfire coordinators in the PHN. And we put out a range of bushfire grants for communities, and a lot of that's around community resilience and recovery. 
and that's been very important for us. The other work that we've been doing to support bushfire uh, affected communities has been around in, in increasing mental health services and we've done that in a range of ways from counselling to trauma and distress services as well as longer term mental health services for those communities. So that's been really important for us. The other thing that's been absolutely a focus for us around bushfires has been to make sure that we're still meeting with community people and we're still connecting and we're still hearing about what's happening on the ground. So we've made sure that we're continuing to be visible for those communities that have been so impacted and continue to be so. The rural workforce strategy is really important for us and important rurally across uh, a lot of areas. The reason for that is that we're seeing um, isolated GPs, uh, many of whom are nearing retirement. We're seeing a reduced number of trainee GPs, registrars coming through. So we're very concerned about our uh, ability to support the workforce across the region, but particularly rurally, and the impacts on uh, GPs particularly and their practices. We really do want to engage with community organisations, councils, as well as local GPs and other clinicians to say, okay, what are the, th the key things that we think might work here? Coming up at the end of the year, we still have more work to do to make sure that we continue to support clinicians and practices out of COVID and, and through COVID because it won't end with the end of the calendar year. So we need to continue to do that and we'll be continuing to increase some commission services where the federal government is funding them. For us also, we're looking to increase our GP and clinical input in the organisation. So we've been uh, putting out expressions of interest for some key GP advisors across our COVID response, COVID planning ahead work, as well as our uh, partnership work with the local health districts and we see that as a, an important area of development for us. Then coming into next year we want to make sure that we're helping uh, the primary care clinicians and practices across the region to continue their sustainability and their great models of care uh, through COVID and then beyond.